Glory returned to the United States in July for its first ever event in the Sunshine State with Glory 67 Orlando. On this 4th of July weekend, those in attendance were treated with fireworks of their own. Inside the Glory Ring, the world's premier stand-up combat organization featured the featherweight title fight, a key matchup in the heavyweight division, and the return of the unstoppable three. Next in a wave of great Glory contenders, We'll recap it all next on Glory 67 Rewind. We start with highlights from the Super Bantamweight division. Coming off her successful debut back at Glory 63 Houston, Rebecca Irwin, Glory's youngest fighter, looked to make it two in a row as she took on Taylor Jenkins, making her Glory debut. And Rebecca Irwin, true to form with a pretty much dominating performance, although Jenkins did have her moments. Yeah, and it was uh, Becca Irwin keeping her distance control, really pulling in Jenkins into the fight, and she used her long-range weapons well. You saw a lot of good front kicks, a lot of good ground kicks at level changes. But Jenkins showed a lot of good heart coming forward, eating a lot of good punches uh, and, and knees on the inside, but really scrappy fight. And it just shows that, you know, that calm, you know, collective style of Irwin, you know, played in her favor. Here are the final strike statistics. One-way traffic for Irwin in everything except for the punches. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of super bantamweight action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals from our three ringside judges. They all see the bout and score the bout the same. 30-27, a unanimous decision. All for your winner, Rebecca Irwin. Next up. Highlights from the featherweight division as one of the three unstoppables, Abraham Vidalas of Mexico, looked to remain undefeated as he took on American Trevor Ragin. Highlights from our opening contest here on Glory 67, Trevor Ragin and Abraham Vidalas. Yeah, there was that right hand from Ragin, probably his best strike in this fight. But after that fight, Vidalas, uh, sorry, after that strike, Vidalas was able to gain his composure, start mixing levels, especially with his punches. Throwing good combinations, showcasing high-level striking, mixing punch-kick combinations, changing levels, and that's just what makes him so talented. And you mean from round one to round three, we saw the same type of fight, same power, same clean technique. Here is the total strike count. The Dallas landing more punches and kicks for a total of 85 of 231, 51 of 120 for Ragin. Just too much outfit for Vidalis, and he dominated every single round. Tim Hughes with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's take a look at the totals. All three of our ringside judges see the bout and score the bout the same. 30-27, a unanimous decision. All for your winner, Abraham Vidalis. With the unanimous decision, Vidalis improves his record to 13-0 overall and 3-0 in glory. The victory moved him into the top 10 of the division and served notice, he's here to stay. A bit later on Rewind, the professor, featherweight champion Pet Panamroon looks to defend for the second time as he takes on number two ranked Anvar Boynazarov. But up next, another key featherweight bout between number one ranked Sergei Adamchuk and number five, Kevin Van Nostrand. Also, American Ross Levine makes his glory debut in dramatic fashion. Welcome back to Rewind. Two fighters new to glory's welterweight division took to the ring with Americans Ross Levine and Thomas Dion. It was quick and easy work for one of the Americans. Touch him up, step back, let's do it. Ross Levine, nicknamed Turbo. And he is coming in hot after an illustrious karate career. Looks to make the transition to kickboxing. His glory debut right now. He's in the white gloves, orange shorts. Taking on Nomas in the black gloves. 
So watch Levine to try to use his in and out movement, that sport karate distance, hit and not get hit. And he says one of his strategies is going to be to mix and blend the Dutch kickboxing with the sport Whoa, karate. Nice. One, two, three, four. Right, Obviously, right. karate a hands based martial arts, Push. Joe. And that's what we saw right away. Yeah, he's got it some good power. And he switched that kick. What a debut for Ross Turbo Levine. He switched stances to throw that kick. What a phenomenal finish for Ross Levine. 30 seconds later, Turbo has his glory victory. And how? What a performance. And he looks like he even took some punches in those exchanges. But the way he switched his stance to throw that head kick, wow, what a finish. This crowd is buzzing. One of the biggest international karate competitions taking place this weekend in Orlando. A lot of karate fans coming to see him tonight, and they were not disappointed. Man, he just improved his record to 3-0, three, oh, three finishes. You can't get a better start than that. And Joe, at the age of 31, he's, he's ready for some top guys if he's as good as advertised here. Yeah, there he landed a left hook, just missed the left hand, came back with the hook. And you can see, you know, Dion was trying to stay off, try to use his clinch to defend those punches, but he was trying to mix those knees. But the key is when you watch Ross Levine, you're going to see him switch stances when he really gets that head kick in. But right away, you can see Dion really trying to control him in the clinch. But see that back step switch? He goes self-pop for a moment and then mixed it in. His whole body shut down just like that. Into the fight and ends by knockout for your winner, Ross Levine. In one of the quickest knockouts of the year, Ross Levine with a high leg kick introduces himself to the welterweight division. Our main event in the Glory Super Fight Series was a battle of top ranked featherweights looking to get back into title contention when number one Sergei Adamchuk took on fifth ranked Kevin Ben Nostrand. Here we go. The number one contender position could be on the line. Ben Ostrand in the black gloves, Adam Chuk in the white. You see both self paws. You see Adam Chuk changing levels with his oh, hands. Nice knee that flip. was possibly a knockdown, but the referee but, says no. Well, it was hard to see at the ropes covering, but they're both coming with some good offensive attacking. The unpredictability of Van Oostrand and the technical precision of Adam Chuk on display here tonight. You can see the way Van Oostrand fights is different stances, you know, moving in, out, jumps in with his knees. Adam Chuk looking to power punch. Strand with a little back fist. He loves that punch. Yep, amazing with it too. Usually with his jab hand. There's another knee. He'll work those knees to the body as often as he can. Fight. I talked about the fitness and strength of Vanner Strand. Said he'd never lifted weights ever in a fight camp, but for this one he did, and he said I'm stronger than I've ever been. Yeah, when you asked him, he gave you a nice little flex. Yeah. Confident. Stop, stop, His muscles stop. are almost as big as yours, Joe. Right. I'm a light heavyweight now, so <laughs> I hope they're bigger. Adam Chuck really wanted to use his power punches, and one of my keys for him was to use his counters versus that blitz style. Adam Chuck attacking the body. Boy, a lot of movement. They're all over this ring. Both men in phenomenal physical condition. Adam Chuk always in peak shape. All he does, wake up and train. Close round as we expected, Joe. 
Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen Aaron Chuck use his kicks much. Watch the hold, guys. Fight! You know, according to our, our fight stats, he's only thrown one kick. And especially since Vanishan moves a lot, that's when you want to attack the legs. Fight! Ten seconds! There's those lunging knees that are hard to defend. 32 knees and kicks have landed for Van Ostrand, just three for the Ukrainian. And the problem is now, even though he starts kicking, there's one from him there. Maybe he can surprise Kevin Van Ostrand, but going to the leg now might be a little bit more difficult. He should have invested earlier in them. All three judges in agreement that Van Ostrand win, has won the first two rounds. Does Van Ostrand change anything here, Joe? No, but I like what he's doing. He stays busy. He kicks, he moves, keeps his distance. Time, time, and when he time, finds time, the right time. moment, he comes in. But... Right there. Right there. My time. And that was a low blow. And as Van Ostrand was going to the ground, it looked like was Adam Chuk threw a punch. Right That's an accident. Just, so, yeah, just stay right there. Okay. Can you he seemed to be having a lot of low blows tonight. Oh, it looked like the heel from the front kick hit the cup. Okay. Now watch this punch here from... If we Coach. Let it keep rolling. Coach. Watch the punch here. Coach. Boom. Yeah. I guess, I mean, in Adam Chuck's defense, maybe he thought the, you know, the front kick hurt him to the body. You know, sir, hey, Adam Chuck is a, is a great sport, so you know it wasn't intentional. No coaching, please. All right, guys, no coaching. Just fix the cup. Is it good? Is it yeah. good, champ? All right, now look at that, Come on. Yeah, you take your time. You take your time. Stay right here. Hey, stop. Stop. Amir Abdallah, the eccentric coach in the corner of Van Ostrand, okay. looked there at Adam Chuck and said, hey, Ready, man, guys? what are you doing? Time in. He's all smiles, though. It's been great for Van Ostrand up until that point. But Adam Chuck's going to throw everything at the American down the stretch. Yep, that's the urgency now. He's really blasting those punches. There's the counter work. Come in and bang. Stop. Break clean. Break clean. Fight. Nice calf kick there from Van Ostrand. Yeah, he came in with a nice deep shin. Those are the ones that hurt. The ones you don't hear hurt more than the slaps. Stop. Another knee right to the rib cage. So much redness all over the body of Adam Chuk. Van Ostrand has dominated this contest. Stop, 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 stop. Back up. Back up. Fight. Minute and a half to go here. What can Adam Chuk pull out? He does have 14 knockouts in his 38 wins. And yeah, the key for him there, he's got to, he can't let Van Ostrand break so easily. He needs to throw out of his break. Don't flinch, don't flinch. Well, that's, that's what Adam Chuk needs to do there. Stop! Very clean. Fight! Swing and a miss for Adam Chuk. Minute to go. This will be one of the biggest wins of Van Ostrand's career to knock off the number one ranked featherweight in the world. Yeah, Kevin Van Ostrand is more motivated than ever to get back to those world title shots. Former Glory Interim Featherweight Champion. He won the, that championship at Glory 48 New York in his home state. Rumors are we could be headed back to the Big Apple again later this year. Wouldn't he love a title shot again there? Adam Chuck swings and misses Stop. twice again. Stop. Break clean. Fight. 20 seconds to go. Adam Chuk tries a rolling thunder. Stop, 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 stop. There. 10, 10 seconds, seconds to go. Fight. Adam Chuk just trying anything out. Hey. As we look at our highlights from our featured fight here on the Glory Super Fight Series. And it was a good dominant performance for Kevin Van Ostrand, who did a good job at mixing his strikes, landed some great knees, mixing his strikes really well, where Adam Chuk really came in with a game plan and really wanted to use his boxing, try to use his counters with his hands, but Van Ostrand did a good job at staying out. And as you know, Adam Chuk came in, he had some good knees waiting. 
And there's the family right there hooting and hollering for Kevin Van Ostrand, who appears to have picked up his 19th career win. Let's look at our strike totals. And it was all kicks and knees from Van Ostrand. Adam Chuck tried to get the job done with punches, but simply didn't have enough. 46 of 116 for Adam Chuck. And it was the body and legs attack of Van Ostrand that has left Adam Chuck with red marks all over his body. The official decision now in Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Here now are their totals. They score this bout 29, 28. The two remaining judges score it 30, 27. A unanimous decision, all for your winner, Kevin Van Nostrand. In a mild upset, Kevin Van Nostrand with the victory moves up two spots and now positions himself as the number one contender and next in line for a title shot. Still to come, the featherweight world title between the professor and current champion Pet Patamro and the number two ranked Anvar Boynazarov. But coming up, the next of our three young unstoppables and a top five ranked heavyweight clash. Next up, a lightweight battle between two fighters at their highest ranking within the division as number four and undefeated Elvis Gashi took on number six, Justin Houghton. When a clean, fair fight start to finish, touch him up, step back, good luck to you both. Touch him Good luck, brother. All the way back. A nice Albanian contingent here in touch Orlando right. pulling for Elvis Super Gashi, who was actually named by his aunt Go. after Elvis Presley, but told us yesterday, I hate Elvis Presley's music. He's wearing the white gloves, J-Ho in the black. Right away, you see the southpaw left kicks of Gashi. And J-Ho coming forward, he's got a, a wicked oh, flying knee, but that, oh, oh, what a kick from two, Gashi! You could see, three, you could four, hear it! So five, nasty! Six, and Justin Houghton seven, may not get up! Eight. What a statement made here for Elvis Gashi! He wants a world title shot, and he may have just earned it! Well, that was one of the most powerful left kicks we've seen. We know he has that finish ability, and man, he's just getting better and better. He's staying undefeated. He's got, you know, 23 and 0, now 11 knockouts. He's got an amateur record of 107 wins and three losses. Man, you gotta really think he could be next for a title shot. One of the quickest knockouts in lightweight glory history. Elvis Gashi, we have missed you, my friend. He is back with a vengeance. One kick. Yeah, I mean, he was setting it up. You can see, we know he's got power in that left kick. And you know, J-Ho was trying to get excited, mixing those knees. Elvis stayed patient and just got under that elbow of Houghton, and that's what gave him that finish. And listen, guys, Justin Houghton, one of the toughest fighters you'll ever come across, but there was no standing up after being hit by that left body kick. Yeah, and that body kick, just perfect angle that went right under that elbow, and it was almost low shin instep. And when that hits that liver, there's no coming up from that. Incredible stuff. Listen to this. Oh. J-Ho almost apologizing to Elvis that he couldn't put up more of a fight, but Joe, the bright lights are now shining on Gashi, who switched trainers, and he told us, I've never been faster, my movement is incredible, I'm going to stop him early at a four-month training camp. Yep, he's with Henzo Gracie Academy now, so I mean, that power, man, is just something that Gashi has, and the fact that he can land it so consistently with all the experience he has, man, I'm excited to see. We have him ranked number four, the highest he's been ranked in the lightweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This bout comes to an abrupt end. Just 23 seconds into the fight and is ruled a knockout for your winner and still undefeated, Super L. Gosh!
Earlier tonight, it took Ross Levine 39 seconds in his first round KO, only to be one upped in 21 seconds by Elvis Gashi, who improves his record to 22 and 0, with 10 of those coming by knockout. The victory also moves him up to number three in the lightweight rankings. Then we turned our attention to the heavyweights as they took to the glory ring when number three Jafar Wilness battled number four D'Angelo Marshall in their first ever meeting. Scheduled for three rounds. Do you think it goes that long, Joe? Well, I think it's going to be one that will have to go three rounds because I feel both of them have the, the skills to, to beat the other. Right away, you're going to see Wilness with a nice high guard where D'Angelo Marshall is going to stay a little bit longer. Well, six of Marshall's eight glory fights have ended KO. Three KOs for and three KOs against. Oh, nice uppercut from Marshall and just missed with another one. Wilness backing up against the ropes. But if you've ever seen Wilness fight before, you know he can take a punch. And usually the shots that Wilness gets caught with are head kicks. So that's why you saw Marshall really mixing that head kick early on, but now he's doing good work with the punches and uppercuts. Wilness getting ready for this training camp by sparring with Tyson Fury, the lineal boxing heavyweight champion. Got him ready for his last fight, which was a total one-way destruction. Let's see if Fury got Wilness ready for this one. Yeah, Wilness said that built a lot of confidence. If you can hang in there with, you know, good pro boxers, that kind of translates when you're in here. So far, Wilness just absorbing the attack of D'Angelo Marshall. Maybe he's trying to wear him down. Now he's mixing in his punches. Well, we saw Wilness' fight against Jamal Ben Sadiq. It was Sadiq who dominated round one, crushing it with punch after punch. But eventually, he got tired, and it was Wilness who took over and eventually stopped the Goliath. Yep, and he goes in there, and he goes, and he mixes in body punches and uppercuts. Actually, that was a unanimous decision win for Wilness. Wilness being content at D'Angelo coming forward and mixing his strikes. Neither one of them has just completely opened up yet. But Marshall keeps landing that uppercut. You know, some people will look and say, well, of course, Marshall's going to win. Look at him, he looks like he's in so much better condition than Wilness. What would you say to them? Well, I mean, Wilness, watch his past fights. He's got crazy high output. We're not seeing much of it today, but in the past, he, he has the ability for a heavyweight to go press for three rounds. Oh, Marshall trying for that head kick. Instead, took a slip. 30 seconds to go here in round one. Marshall throwing so many more punches. He's thrown 100 so far. And to only 32 strikes of Wilness. But Wilness knows Marshall really well. Is it let him exhaust round one? But what I like from Marshall, he's not throwing everything with a lot of power. He's setting his shots up. He's not overextending all of his energy. I think the judges gave him Wilness that round, yeah? It'll all come down to this third. Three minutes to go in the heavyweight division. Again, look at Wilness. Joe, he basically decided to fight a two-round fight. Get Marshall tired in the first and come on strong in the last six minutes. Yeah, and I love that explosion out of the shell. I mean, I want to see him maybe mix his uppercuts, hit the body. But there doesn't seem to be that pop in Marshall's hands like we saw in the first two. Don't push him, don't push him. What do you make of Marshall's footwork? Well, right now, he's, he can't move too well. I mean, he's more content of sitting in the pocket. The pressure's maybe starting to wear him down. Good counter punches from Wilness. Switch knee from Wilness, missed with the right hook. Total strikes. Marshall padded those stats in round one. Wilness coming on strong in the second. Almost halfway through the third. D'Angelo is the more active fighter. So, I mean, Wilness landing more of the power shots. But Marshall just keeps, you know, hitting and staying busy. 
I think Willis believes he can still catch him with a heavy hand. Marshall has thrown more than double the strikes of Willis. Work out of there, work out of there. down to damage. Where's the cumulative damage coming from? Volume of Marshall, punching power of Willness. Willness needs to get busy, a minute to go. Final round, number three versus number four in the heavyweight division. Marshall with a good final round here so far. Marshall going back to that uppercut. We haven't seen it much in this last two rounds. 30 seconds left. Does Wilness have another big right hand to land? Marshall dominating this final stanza. We got to have Wilness explode again. Find a few explosive punches out of the shell. That's his time right there. He can't wait too long. He's got to counter a little quicker with 10 seconds left. 10, Ten seconds, seconds to go. I don't think Willis has done enough unless he can catch Big Papa here late. And that ah. was it. Glory 67, our heavyweight battle in the books, Joe. First round, great round for D'Angelo Marshall. Set a high pace, kept, kept coming forward, really trying to land his uppercuts. Willis seems content staying in the shell, but had some good moments. When he exploded out of the shell, landed his power punches, and he got rewarded for that in the second round. But it all came down to really that third round, where you saw Willness really trying to put the power punches on, where D'Angelo really sat, sat there and was really comfortable trying to touch and stay and be the busier fighter. But you can see those big looping punches from Jason Willness trying to get a finish even at the last moments of the fight. But D'Angelo Marshall's output was crazy. More than he outscored Willness by almost double, threw more than double. And this was the end of the fight. Came down to that third round. Who got it? We're going to find out soon. The strike count. D'Angelo Marshall staying really busy with his punches. Really trying to land those uppercuts. And really used his jab really well as well. When you're looking at strikes by round, it was, you know, D'Angelo Marshall really dominating the first and the third, where Jafar Wilness really came in in the second. That Look at that crazy volume that D'Angelo Marshall had. 105 strikes thrown in that third round. Crazy output for a heavyweight. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we once again go to the judges' scorecard. All Three of our ringside judges score them out the same. 29, 28, a unanimous decision. All for your winner, D'Angelo Marshall. The slight upset victory by Marshall moves him up one spot to number three and right back into title contention. We'll step aside one more time, but when we come back, the third of our Unstoppables will try to make it three for three as the American Ninja, Ace at 10 Pal, prepares for battle. Then our main event at Glory 67, the featherweight title of the world between Pet Panamroon Kiatmukau and Anvar Boynazarov. Welcome back to Orlando and Glory 67 Rewind. Our third young, unstoppable Ace of Ten Pal, the American Ninja, brought his undefeated record in glory into the ring against the Moroccan maniac, Osam El Khasri. Touch him up, step back, let's do this. Ace of Ten Pal has traveled the world honing his craft, most notably fighting extensively in Thailand, but he says he's never ready? felt more ready? alive fighting Let's in go. his home state here tonight. Ace of Ten Pal, American Ninja, taking on the Moroccan maniac, Hussam El Khasri, who's wearing the black gloves. And El Khasri very slick with his kicks and his knees. He can throw kicks from any angle, so Ten Pal needs to be careful and respect that skill set. Expecting Ten Pal to come in, pressure a little bit, use his boxing. Lightning quick hands from Ace of Ten Pal. 
And watch the way Ace is gonna mix up the body punches. Goes to the liver really well with his punches. It was interesting, all the fans here jumping up and down, going crazy for Tim Powell. I was watching El Kasri in his corner. He was jumping up and down. He was getting excited for this fight. Yeah, and El Kasri started his glory career 2-0 with two finishes. He ran into Abraham Vidal and ended up losing by TKO in the first round. But the big improvement that he needed to do was box. So after that fight, he went, took a professional boxing fight, and got a good finish. So now you can see a little bit more confidence in El Kasri's boxing. El Kasri going with that high kick. He's come close a couple times. Ten pound needs to be careful. Spinning back kick. We'll call that a slip. It was certainly close. Asa Tempao started with Sanchao when he was young. So this is where a lot of the spin kicks and back kicks come from. He started Muay Thai at 16. Showcasing some solid boxing. In Tempao's last fight, we didn't give him enough respect for his boxing, and he totally called me out for it. And he got a good... You know, knocked down with his hands. So he really wants to showcase his boxing. Tim Pound does have one loss on his professional record, but it's hard to call it a loss. He had a cut over his eyebrow. The doctor waved it off. So thus far, nobody's really put it to him and beaten him, but he is 9-1 and one overall. Outside low kick there for Tim Pound. Yep, El Kasri still blocking them, but that one landed. Not a bad start for El Kasri. Well, Ken Powell is pressuring, hands landing a little bit more effectively. Right hand there for Tim Powell, knocks El Kasri off balance. He tries a flying knee. What an end of the round for Asa Tim Powell. It was a very close round. He might well have lost it, but he won it with one punch there with seconds to go. Yeah, he was pressuring, trying to hit the body, then intelligently he went over with that right hand. We saw that same knockdown in his last fight with Nate Richardson. There's that boxing we talk about with him. Boom, set up right over him. What would you change if you were him right now? Well, he's got to continue to use his kicks, be dynamic. Try to stay off the ropes because that's where Tim Powell's being dangerous with his boxing. Kick fight a little bit from the outside. The featherweight division is very top heavy. You know, Asa Tim Powell can climb up quickly if he can continue to win fights like this. Oh, well, he's currently ranked number nine and he's 4 0 in glory. So he's got to be cracking them in the top 10 probably pretty soon. Sorry, the top five. This fight far from over, though. El Crosstree has shown knockout power and some skills of his own, as seen there. Yeah, there's that Taekwondo background. Good spin kicks. El Crosstree fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of Morocco. Spinning back kick there from Tim Powell. Yeah, you know, Ace is really going to try to set up that overhand right again. He's not getting aggressive with it. A lot of energy being expended. That looked like it could have hurt 10 pounds shoulder the way he fell there. Ten pound leading the strikes, landed in punches. El Kasri with more kicks. So, ooh, that was a nasty one. Yeah, you can see Ten Powell fainting to spin, and then he mixes in that overhand right. Just touched him with a 1-2-1. One, one. Low blow there, it appears. Ten Powell grimacing in pain. We've seen a lot of those tonight. Yeah, I think almost every fight I do. Here's a look at it, Joe. 
Really? You see Asa Tommy. really step in to try to use his hands and just an inside left kick from El Kashri caught the cup. Despite the knockdown, this has been a very competitive fight. Yeah, I like El Kashri's kicking and level changing right now. He's got those fast kicks to the head. Just missing that spinning wheel kick. And you gotta think, Asa being here in home, the crowd cheering for him is getting him really excited. Let's go. Bucks. So we're seeing a lot of spectacular kicking. Kicks landed, El Kasri doubling up the American. El Kasri told us his kickboxing heroes, of course, Bonner Hari and Ramon Decker is another favorite. Nice uppercut there from Ten Pao in that combination. 20 seconds to go in round two. Whoa, and it's El Kasri with the spinning attack. Very similar styles. Yeah, but I asked Asa that in the interview, and he says, no, we're not very similar at all. I think they look pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, they do. Good round. Let's go. Did Asa Tin Pao. And he's the owner and the, the main trainer there at FKA, which makes it even more impressive that he can perform like this and still Stop. running coach and gym. Turn around. So Tin Pal wins the second round as well. El Kasri will need a knockout. I mean, regardless of the outcome, I still think El Kasri is going to be a top prospect. He's only 20 years old and he's doing well. Asa Tin Pal, 29, with more experience. So a lot of development still for El Kasri. But spectacular fighting like this, good offense. I mean, that's fan-friendly, that's what we want. Spinning heel kick to the leg. And Andy Hoog special. Boy, this crowd eating every kick up. I like how Asa feints a spin attack and then tries to come over with the overhand right. Might as well use that spin attack to set something up. We talked about our unstoppable Fighters earlier tonight, the Dallas with a win, Gashi with a KO, and now Asa Tin Pal doing very well. You see, he goes back to the low kicks, but El Kasri blocking the right low kick. One more fight to go. It's also in the featherweight division. It's for the title. Hetch Panamarong versus Anvar Boy Nazarov. It's next. Kick attempts there for Tim Pal. He's pulling out all the stops. Yeah, and I love it because one of my favorite kickboxers is Andy Wu. Likes the spinning heel kick to the leg and the axe kick. I'm sure, Asa Tim Pal is a fan of Wu as well. I'm sure if Wu was still alive, he'd be a fan of Asa Tim Pal. Absolutely. There's the kick. Didn't get it flush. And there's another one. Spinning heel kick. Asa Tim Pal. A spectacular offense is definitely scoring in this fight. Tin Pal may be ranked number nine, Joe, but he feels and looks like a top five fighter for sure. Yeah, he wants the climate. He's he doesn't want to wait. He doesn't want to be babied up. He wants the big fights. He wants the biggest fights he can. He wants bigger names. He wants the top to the five. Let's go. El Kasri needs a knockout. 20 seconds left to get it. And Asa Tin Pal's right there in front of him. He's not going anywhere. A fantastic performance by the American Ninja in his home state. You talk about entertainment. Asa Tin Pal and Hussam El Khosri put on a show. Yeah, and they really put out spectacular offense. A lot of spin kicks from both gentlemen. But ultimately, it was Asa Tin Pal who did the, the better job at pressuring, using his kicks, especially his low kicks. Got that knockdown with a nice overhand right, showcasing his boxing and his full arsenal of strikes. From spin kicks to the legs, spin kicks to the body, to axe kicks that were landing. I mean, that's what the American Ninja does.
El Castro sat there, took a lot of the big shots, kept coming forward, but Asa Tempau now 5-0 in glory. Here's our strike count. Punches 35 of 113 for Asa Tempau. 44 kicks thrown, but look at El Castro, 95 kicks, 36 of them landed. Pretty close overall strike counts for these two gentlemen, but it was Asa Tinpal with that first round knocked down, and there are the strikes by zone. We make it official now with Tim Hughes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance. So we go to the judges' scorecard. They give us back a unanimous decision. All three score the bout 30-26 for your winner, Asa Tenpow. With the victory, Tenpow moves to 5-0 with glory. And combined with Elvis Gashi and Abraham Vidalis, these unstoppables now carry a combined 13-0 glory record. Our main event featured two of the winningest and most powerful featherweights in the division when current champion Pet Panamroon took on number two ranked Anvar Boynazarov. Combined, they entered the ring with 256 wins, 80 of those coming by knockout. Ready? Five rounds for the featherweight championship of the world. The champ, Pet Panamroon in the white gloves, Boynazarov in the black. You're gonna see Anvar be a little bit more patient to come forward, slowly close that distance, and then let that power unfold. Boy Nazarov, when asked how he would handle the left kick of Pesh Panarong, said, I'll just kick him right back. Yep, go one for one. That's one of the best strategies. If you let the southpaw kicker keep kicking and gain momentum, you gotta fire back, you gotta counter them. of Boynazarov have caused so many fighters so many problems here in glory. He's never out of a fight. And compared to the Ace of Tin Pal fight, it sounds like we're in church right now. Well, this is going to be a very technical fight. You can't just go out there and get sloppy. One little mistake. You got a head kick to the head. Or you have Boynazarov <laughs> knocking you out with some power punches. Head kicks to the head are dangerous, Joe. Usually we've seen Petch able to settle into a rhythm. How important is it for Boynazarov not to let him do that? Well, that's why he keeps countering. I mean, if you keep letting Pet hit you and move, hit and move and control that space, you're in trouble. That's that quick counter that Boynazarov needs to keep up with. You know, Petch keeps smiling. Ooh, a nice front kick there from Boynazarov. Petch keeps smiling and <laughs> he answers back. This yeah, is good stuff. Go but Boynazarov, like you said, right in there with Petch. Yep, he'll just keep inching forward, one inch at a time with his footwork. He doesn't take big, aggressive steps. Very calculated stepping. According to Nick Kalekis, the handicapper in Las Vegas, Petch Panarong at minus 900 favorite in this fight. Nine to one, ladies and gentlemen. Those odds seemed a little high. Yeah, I thought so. I mean, they're not giving Boynazarov enough respect. Styles make fights. And Boynazarov has, in his opinion, the perfect style to beat the professor. Stop. On the other Rick, side, stop. Pets have been so dominant in his last few fights. Fight. Ah. Round two, all three judges scoring it for the tie fighter. He's up 20 to 18 already. Yep, there's that pressure with the boxing you need to, we need to see from Boynazarov. His corner was really adamant on him, slowly edging, pressuring, letting the hands go. Fight. 
Boy, Nazaroff has been stopped once in glory. That came at the hands of Kevin Van Ostrand back in December 2017. A vicious knee to the sternum ended that contest. Yeah, but just before he got stopped with that knee, he dropped Van Ostrand with a power punch. So always dangerous. One of the great rounds in recent glory memory. Here's our kicks. Petch quadrupling the output. Boy, big roundhouse right hand, nobody home. It's just so crazy to see one weapon be so dominant. He doesn't have to rely on his boxing much or his knees. He landed a nice left straight. Boy, Nazarov willing to eat two or three kicks to get in there and let his hand go. Nice left kick in and out for Petch. He'd love to do that the rest of the way. We're starting to see a little bit more clinching here in the third round. There's a knee from Anvar. Yeah, that's his favorite strike. He's got some good knockouts in his career with that. We asked Petch, would he do better against Boynazarov in kickboxing or in Muay Thai? And he said, I'd kill him in both. <laughs> yeah, we've seen a lot more confidence in Petch, really calling out knockouts now. He wants finishes. They predicted a second round in this one. That front leg has got to be hurting for Brandon Nozarov. And that left hand, boy, I thought Petch was buckled for a second. Oh, you jumped out of your seat there. <laughs> like it's one shot away from both guys. Well, that's what Boynazarov has to do. Crowd him and let the hands go. Yeah, he's got to put more of them in combinations. A the single's not working. You see Petch get out of that single overhand every time. But when he comes in and Petch is against the ropes like that, when he mixes in uppercuts, hooks, and body punches, he has some success. Petch Penrong has 200 professional fights. This is number 201. That round looks pretty good, all right? But we gotta keep that pressure on. You fucking them up now. Now you're getting those exchanges, right? Let's con keep controlling that. Let's work that inside low kick and follow up with that. You gotta follow up with me. Follow for the punch, okay? Up to you. But we got this, all right? You gotta make sure to keep the pressure on them. All right? You can see a lot of bruising started to develop on the arms of Anvar Boynazra. And you can see the inside leg. Petch has been attacking that. And you see a lot of that blood and pooling and swelling in that leg. Round five, three minutes left. Will it be business as usual for Petch Panarong, or does Boynazarov have something special? Stop, stop, Some urgency stop, now from Anvar. He's waited many years for this moment, so he's got to let it all out. Leave it in here. Yeah, Petch is going to get warned here. here. You can't, you can't throw, throw it down. You can't throw, you can't sweep. That's the second time you do it. You do it again, I'm taking a point. I don't want to be involved with this, you understand? Don't do it anymore. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Petch right, speaks bro? little okay? to no yeah. English. Okay, Not right. sure if he had right. any okay, idea what Wayne right, Spinola right, was saying. Time in. Fight. But he surely knows that was not legal. Well, sometimes his Muay Thai tendencies oh, tend to come out. I mean, 200 Fight. professional fights. You know, only 10 of them were in kickboxing. Stop! Fight! Well, Bornazarov has never really appeared to be in trouble being knocked out, but at the same time, he's never appeared to be able to knock out Petch Panamarok. And that's not a good combination because Petch will just pick you apart with the left body kick. Stop, stop. Yep, just kept scoring away. Fight. I mean, in theory, it seems easy to beat the left kick, but there's a reason why he's the champion. And nine and one. 
looking for career victory number 163 tonight. Stop, Ray Queen. Petch Back says up. one of the best things about being a champion Fight. is that he could provide for his family. They are, or were, a very poor farming-based family. Bought his dad a tractor many years ago, and now he's making more money than he ever has. Fight. From the small province of Buram in Thailand, small town there. He posts, some fighters post videos of them on Instagram training in high-tech gyms. Most of the pictures on Petch Panamrong's account Stop. are of him clean. on a dirt road with buddies with go. chickens running around. Right. Yeah. And you can see his weight training. You see him with like cement made dumbbells and just amazing to see. Back to the basics. Nice stuff there from Boy Nazarov. 25 seconds to go here in our main event featherweight championship of the world. Nice high kick. Stop breaking. 10 seconds, fight. Stop. And that will do it. Another dominating performance by the professor as we look at these highlights. Yeah, just as we expected, you know, Petra was able to control the distance, the pace, the range of this fight with his left kick. And what he does really well is he'll mix these front kicks off the round kick. As, as soon as you expect a round kick coming, he'll mix it up the front. He did land some good left straights in this fight, but ultimately his ability to control the fight, the pace and the distance, you know, gave him his second title defense. And Joe, let's look at the strike count. Yeah, you can see very easy that it was Pitt Panabrooms really trying to use his kick in his distance, but you know, Boy Nazarov just didn't have the answer in the counter punch to get anything done tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard, and once again, they give us back a unanimous decision. All three score them out 50 45, a unanimous decision for your winner, and still, Glory Featherweight Champion of the World, Pat Padamru Kiatmuka. In easy fashion, Pet Panamrung proved why he will be hard to unseat as champion. No one is more accurate and dangerous with a kick than the professor. That will do it for this edition of Glory Rewind. Don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com, or follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram, as well as catch up on our Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on Glory Rewind. Are you ready for Glory?